Is this how you usually take apart a battery? Usually, yeah. This yeah. is standard practice. Where's your butter knife? How's it going guys? My name is Savarish and this thing that barely looks like a car behind me is my flooded and wrecked McLaren P1. Now when I first got it I knew that this was going to be the biggest project ever. But today we're going to find out if I made a huge mistake. So if you've ever had a project car before you'll know that things don't always go according to plan. But in the case of my two million dollar P1 build, reality hit me like a ton of bricks. The body needed work, the engine didn't run, and it basically converted my shop into beachfront property. But my team and I got to work to create the ultimate version of the P1, which, as you can imagine, comes with some very big challenges. All right, so we have the stock rear clamshell in front of me, and I, I think I'm gonna make things a little bit harder. Let me explain. So there is a little internal lattice structure here. Um, this is not lettuce, not lettuce structure, lattice. lattice. There is an internal structure here that's also <laughs> carbon fiber. And as you can see, it is glued in. It is bonded with uh, probably some two part epoxy and it is all over the rear clamshell. And this is what affixes all the panels. This is what aligns it to the car. And on this panel, this is our aftermarket there isn't any internal lattice structure, but I think this carbon is actually a little bit thicker. What I want to do, however, is so we don't have to spend time fitting up anything. I want to put that structure in here. And I don't think this was necessarily built for it, but I think that we can make a custom car out of two of these things. And this is going to be the most expensive experiment I've ever had on this channel and in my shop. Why not? Let's cut some more stuff on this car. Yeah, so this now, this uh, rear clamshell will be unusable. Uh, this was yeah. brand new, $130,000. I got hammers too. Hammers. We can use a hammer too. We're gonna use a hammer. So a little change of plans. We're just gonna cut this entire thing up because uh, I don't think there's a way to save this piece and uh, reuse a bunch of stuff. So. Uh, we're just going to use a uh, sawzall. And uh, the reason why Jack is dressed like that is because carbon fiber is very, 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 very super itchy. So, uh, and we're also doing it outside because we don't want that inside. So, I'm scared. Jack's going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be around for this. Wait, I'm not sure we should do this. <laughs> Here you go, we'll put it back. <laughs> yeah, it's a Claren now. <laughs> Look at it. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Other than crippling anxiety? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really, not, not, not a ton of room for anything else. Hey Jack, what are you about to do? I'm about to cut up a very expensive piece and make it better. It's gonna be better. Okay. I promise this won't hurt. Not me. It's gonna hurt me. Okay.
So I don't know if you can tell by that last video, but it is like a thousand degrees outside. Now, pro tip, if you're working outside in the summertime or in a hot shop, then it is super important to hydrate. Dehydration can really creep up on you. Thankfully, today's sponsor, AirUp, will revolutionize the way you drink water forever. Now, if you don't know what AirUp is, it's more than just a water bottle. It's a hydration revolution. With AirUp, you're drinking just water while experiencing flavor through scent. It's what they call scent-based taste, and they have lots of different flavors of scented pods you can choose from ranging from cola, wild berry, apple and cucumber, strawberry balsamic, and many more. And each pod lasts for at least five liters of water. That's more than a gallon. Now here's how it works. You suck the water through the straw and a slipstream is created. This transports water and air through the scented pod into your mouth. And that's when the scent-based taste kicks in, the technical term for smelling through the back of your nose. So essentially, smelling in your mouth. And with AirUp, you get the enjoyment of flavor without absorbing anything unnatural. You can keep your body free of chemicals, additives, or sweeteners, while still experiencing really good taste. Now I urge every single one of you to go to the link in my description below and try one of these out for yourself. You will love it. It's totally worth it. It's in the link in the description below. Go check it out right now. So we got old and busted, new hotness. Old and busted, new hotness. That was a, that was a bad joke, right? I'm confused, which one's old and busted? Jack has, with extreme prejudice, taken apart this $130,000 rear clamshell. And uh, he doesn't look very nervous or anything. He, it looks like he just did it and he didn't have any issues at all. It's not mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, actually there was a little bit of care with this because this is extremely thin. As you can see, it's super flexible. So I had to grind all the bonding material off of this. And once I got all the bonding material grind off of it, I could set it inside of this. And then I cut the bottom of that piece there so that we could fit it up. It's still not fully fit yet, but now we have the OEM shell and skeleton that we can put inside of our aftermarket part. Yeah, this is looking a lot better. Uh, now, before we put any of that on, uh, this is still a little bit of a process. We have to do some processing to that, right? Yeah. yeah, so we wanted to use these lower sections because these lower sections are a lot nicer than the other ones. And we had some ideas to modify them too. We wanted to make it special, right? Yeah. It's already special, but we're making it a lot more special. Like short bus special. Yeah, short bus special because that's us. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now we have to smooth this out. We have to get this thing looking as straight as possible, and that's why we have Brian here. So Brian... Yeah, he wasn't just, uh, you know, standing here to uh, clean up the shop. He does more than that, I actually. He does more than that. Yeah, so uh, Brian runs a very, very good YouTube channel called Paint Society. That's right. Yeah, go check that out and subscribe because uh, he does really good paint modification and uh, DIYs and how-tos. He's the guy to talk to about paint, but uh, right now he's the guy to talk to about sanding so you guys are going to be sanding this yeah yeah you see here it's got a lot of waves a lot of lo low spots anywhere that's pretty much still not sanded that's shiny and mm -hmm. we're going to have to sand it down and add multiple layers of clear coat sand it down it's going to be a big process for this actual job here but i think when it's all done it's going to come out pretty good well, hopefully, but I, you'll notice that this has been sanded down already, uh, and that's because Jack and Rex, they, uh, they, they went a little crazy. That was, yeah, you can clip to that. Let's go! Let's get it, Jack! We got it, Jack! We got it, Jack! Let's go! But now comes the very tedious process of sanding, then uh, clear coating, then sanding, and clear coating. How many times, like, we're gonna, we're gonna put this on camera, how many times do you think that you're gonna sand and clear coat? Depends on your expectations. My expectations are perfect. Perfection, <laughs> absolute 100%, like Elon Musk. It's, it's, it's down to 10 microns. I know that that's not how you do things. I don't know, it's gonna be perfect. It's Absolutely gonna at perfect. least take three phases, I would say. Three, okay. Five, you five. say five. I say five, clear, five times clearing it with a minimal of four coats each time. Okay, okay. I'm so, a little bit more of an optimist, but uh, I'm saying maybe three, but probably five. I'm gonna say one because you guys are awesome. <laughs> you guys <laughs> are great. Lie. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go order parts for this thing. <laughs> this thing needs parts.
So as you can imagine, it's a bit of two steps forward and one step back. Now, Jack and Brian did an amazing job. You can see the really, really good work that they did on these rear and front clamshells. Now, unfortunately, on camera, you can't see all the little imperfections. This actually doesn't have too many imperfections. I think this is gonna need to be sanded and uh, sprayed one or two more times. But the rear is gonna be a problem child because that has a lot of waves, it has a lot of compound curves, and it was a prototype part. It's literally the size of a car and it's one piece of carbon fiber, so it's gonna need a lot of work. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we have the time for that work to get done because this car has to go to SEMA. So I have made an executive decision and this car is gonna go to SEMA with an exposed engine bay. It's gonna go to SEMA so you can see everything underneath the rear clamshell, so you can see everything kind of naked. Uh, and we are gonna make that really, really nice. So I still have a lot of work cut out ahead of me. And the front clamshell and doors and everything ahead of the rear clamshell is gonna be in its completed form. So we have a lot of work there. But right now I'm gonna switch gears because there's something else that's been nagging me on this car and it's something that can stop us in our tracks. And this is what I'm talking about right here. Now, if you guys don't know what this is, this is my P1's battery, the $160,000 battery. And I have it on the side of my building because I don't want it to explode in my building. That's, uh, that's the only reason why it's out here. It's in the elements. And honestly, I don't think anything's gonna happen to it because I don't think there's any voltage in it. But today we are gonna find out what is inside and if we can make our own battery and I hope we can because that's the only way my car is going to start. So I'm not going to do this myself because I have no idea what I'm doing with the battery, but this guy does. I need half up front, Freddy. You need what? This thing. I need half up front. Half of what? The payment. There's a payment? Yeah. This is this is hazard pay. You can't just... I can't. This has been sitting outside for months now. This is dangerous. Okay, so here's how it works. I have yeah. more... Just, I have more subscribers than you, so you get paid that's in clout. Too. Dark. Okay, so everybody go subscribe to what's your, cha what's your channel again? Whatever, it's not important. It's yeah. neither here nor there. The game plan is obviously taking the cover off because I remember not only was this battery flooded, but it also caught fire as well. So it's kind of like a two for one deal. Yeah. So we have to deal with uh, salt, corrosion, and fire damage. So there's a lot going on. I think the best course of action, once we get the cover off, is to see what we have for serial numbers, part numbers to see if we could actually source the components maybe build our own that's what i'm thinking that would be nice because uh you own electrified garage electrified garage yes it's a service and repair facility uh, for electric vehicles and uh we've done stuff like this in the past not to this level and not to this price point either i think this is what 140 fifty thousand dollar battery 60 but that's okay it's yeah, a, yeah you get yeah, around you know, once you get to a certain level you'll you know, you'll yeah you'll get yeah. to those maybe numbers. i'll get there someday May maybe i'm maybe. hoping i can oh buddy beautiful bean footage yeah look at that okay that looks good that looks like a good battery yeah oh dude it's cool so it's rechargeable so all we have to do is charge it up yeah let's yeah. just uh i almost want to get a a voltmeter on it to see what it's actually putting out but uh, yeah, I feel a, lot like... of, a lot of these things are going to be Man, it caught fire and it exploded. Look at this. Blew a hole right in the back of it. I feel like that's okay. Yeah, it might be all right. So um, once you get the top cover off, uh, these are security screws. You have those bits, right? You'd be all right. Um, once you get the top cover off, we're going to get a closer look and see what's inside. But honestly, it looks relatively simple. Uh, the biggest thing now is um, refurbishing the electronics that make the battery talk to the car yeah i think that's the biggest thing getting the battery going is that's relatively simple but getting it to the talk back to the car on the hybrid system that could be the challenging part because i don't know what communication protocols the battery uses to talk to the mclaren so so one thing i do know about this is that uh this guy on the back yeah uh that is the dc to dc converter oh it is okay yeah. this part right here all right yeah. that's that's definitely good to know but uh it seems like it's pretty simple other than that obviously we'll know more once we get this top cover off. But, so um, I feel like we shouldn't do this uh, right out here. Maybe not here, no. Y yeah, maybe we should take it to the electrified garage. They know what they're doing there. Yeah. Let's go over there and take it there. Okay. Yeah. Are All you right. sure they know what they're doing? I caught, I hope so. <laughs> So bad. 
We are men. We are men. <laughs> All right, everyone. So here is an update. Um, we have the battery. We have uh, cleaned it off as much as possible. And uh, the problem is these bolts at the top are this weird uh, sort of triple square security bit that doesn't seem to exist anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, we're gonna have to be creative in taking this apart. But one thing we haven't done, and one thing I think would be useful for you to know, is uh, whether this has any actual voltage in it or not. So we're gonna check that right now. We got zero volts. Yeah. Zero volts. This looks fine. Okay. There's no voltage in it. There's, there's, no, there's no voltage in this. So I can touch it, and it's gonna be, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm, it's still like a loaded gun. Oh, baby. Like these, are, these are hard. Ah, here we go. Uh-huh. See? That's all you have to do. All you have to do is risk cutting into the top of the battery. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> to take the heads off. No, we're good. You go. Oh, that was great. I feel like we can use this. I'm going to call that good. We have uh, two gigavac contactors. What, which there. which ones are those? Right Make sure to touch them with your these fingers. These two, these mm -hmm. two right there. Say gigavac on. Lick them. your fingers first. Okay. Um, we just have some logic on top. Some uh, some logic. Some logic meaning how it controls power going in and out of the battery. Okay. Um, we have some heavy duty heavy duty fuses on the bus bars. Okay. Did so those blow? We could test them and see if the continuity. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Because if they didn't blow. I mean, probably, probably yeah. should redesign yeah, that. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> what are you thinking? Did they blow or not? I'm gonna go ahead and say they blew, but what? Uh, all right, so all the fuses are good. Yeah. Uh, which means that they didn't blow, which means that they didn't do their job. Let me see. Did this one do anything? That's good too. Okay, so all the fuses on the top are good. I feel like all the electronics here yeah. are probably These fine. These are probably all good. Yeah. If yeah. you just get some, uh, you have a uh, ultrasonic cleaner, right? Yep, I, the whole I thing sure do. Be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Ricardo makes their own boards, right? Ricardo? The people that make the McLaren engines? I think they make their own, don't they? You're making me look crazy here, Freddy. This doesn't, please this answer isn't, me. This isn't please. made by Ricardo. Well, wait a minute. I thought I saw, right here, Ricardo. That's the same logo. So I think they make... It might be I think an interface with the engine or something. Maybe with the hybrid system, yeah. But... I'm gonna go ahead and say, just pretend you didn't see that. Okay, yeah. I don't know who, who makes this. Is this how you usually take apart a battery? Usually, yeah. This yeah. is standard practice. Where's your butter knife? This is the worst battery I've ever seen, for sure. It is. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm impressed with uh, McLaren's design. I am curious to see what uh, individual cells they're using, but uh, the way McLaren has things layered is certainly interesting. Obviously, they were going for a compact size. Yeah. And they and they, they definitely got it. It doesn't even look like we're looking at you know 10 plus year old technology. It looks like it was made relatively recently. So. See, that's not what I wanted to hear. I, I wanted oh. to hear, oh, this is a piece of crap. Oh, this and, is terrible. Uh, and we have the technology to make this oh, yeah, 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 10 yeah, times yeah, better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we here at the Electrified Garage do not quit. No, we don't. Never. Hey, okay, whoa. Ooh. That is insane. Look at that. What's that smell like? It smells like bad jello. Bad jello? Yeah. It looks like bad jello. Okay, so this right here is the DC to DC converter. It converts the high voltage to low voltage. Correct, yes. Right, so whatever the voltage was in this battery was like 600 volts, converts that to 12 volts for the car. Uh, basically acts as an alternator and runs 12 volt systems in the car. 
This is supposed to be uh, sealed, but I don't know if it was meant for this kind of salt water intrusion, so let's take this off. It's surprisingly clean on the inside. Dude, that looks spotless. I'm actually surprised. That's pretty good. That's really good. So this is the chill plate. And uh, these are the two ports that the coolant runs through, uh -huh. just to keep all the electronics cool. Because when you're converting, you know, 570 something volts down to 12, uh, sometimes that can get relatively hot. So that that keeps everything cool here. But Freddie, I think this might be okay, man. That's I th crazy. I think going in here and just uh, making sure nothing's corroded. But I think a lot of this. Yeah. It's just the excess from the gasket that was in that just fell in. Yeah, I mean, the gasket doesn't look very good. Uh, it's just kind of falling apart here. But this looks, I mean, I don't want to touch anything because there's probably capacitors and yeah. stuff in here. But. No, that dude. looks that looks surprisingly good. What I like to do in these situations, I like to see who the manufacturers are of these products. Uh -huh. Just to kind of say to myself, okay, this company is still in business, which is good. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it could be just made specifically for McLaren. Yeah. But it's just good to see, you know, what companies are coming together to make parts for these cars. Well, this thing says Next Tech Inc. Okay. I don't know what that is. Is that uh, a maybe it's is that a thing? Next, does do, do, does tech, Tesla have Next if, Tech? If someone from Next Tech Inc. is watching this right now, just give it a comment in the uh, down below. This would be about thirty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. Dude, this is it's pretty clean. This look this looks great. It looks yeah. spotless in here. Yeah. This is impressive. Okay. Good. Ooh. It looks like a little apartment complex, doesn't it? Look at New York City high rise. Yeah, it looks like a project. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Complete with rodents and everything. Yeah, oh boy. I really want one of the cells out. It's going to be a problem to get out for right. sure. But try, try a hammer. We'll Hammers try. always work. We'll take it outside yeah. and hammer it. Yeah. All right, we're testing to see if there's any voltage on these. And... No. No, Zip. nothing. I'm fairly certain all of them are dead, but... Yeah. Just curious. I mean, that's that's a dead giveaway right there. Yeah. Like that, you know, this little pineapple under the sea over here. McLaren did a great job making sure these batteries were safe because look, these things exploded and they just shut out the side. It's like a mozzarella stick. You yeah. Just squeeze like that. And um, <laughs> you don't do that? Uh, no, I don't, I don't squeeze on mozzarella sticks. You don't sticks. eat it before you eat, you don't squeeze it and then eat it? You don't squeeze mozzarella sticks before you eat them? No. Like the casing, you don't do that? No. These are all encased in aluminum. Mm -hmm. Like there's really no way of getting these things out. I, I do want to try. Maybe let's we'll put let's some, get a hammer. Get some PB blaster and a hammer. That's why I want to test the voltage first, but it, it's, it could be challenging. But we'll try it. I think so. Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, we've gone this far. You might as well go all the way. Yep. I want to get one sell out. Okay. That, that'd be nice. That's, that's, that's my personal goal. You got to sell out. And then I'll, I'll explain to the paramedics. Thank you. Look at that. That fit all the way through. There you go. Yay. Do the honors. It's yours. Oh, look. It is. Dude, look at, look at what that says. A123. You son of a... I thought that it wasn't A123 Systems. Apparently it is. So was. it's like layers. It's like seven different like shell companies. Mm -hmm. You ever watch like Scooby-Doo? Yeah. And they a massive person. Yeah. Ah, Aha! I knew it was yeah. you. A123 Systems. Okay. So, so does this have a, a part number? Right. Oh, the, okay. So that's the part number. Yeah. And then what kind is it? Ultra B. Nanophosphate lithium ion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's look this up and see if we could find how much these go for. Oh, yeah. Then we'll just what, kinda... what, what are you thinking? Those are $3 a piece. Those? I think more than $3 more a piece. Than $3 a piece. More than $3 a piece? Yeah. Four fifty. I'm gonna go five, five, plus. five fifty. Five fifty. Five fifty. I don't. I don't have that kind of cash. Five plus. So all right, let's go. Let's can go. Spot, can you spot me? Yeah, of course. Right. What was my guess? Five plus. Yeah. Said five oh, fifty. What do we got? Hey yo! <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. There's no way. Twenty five bucks on eBay. I mean, that's that's it. That, this is that insane. Is, that is literally it. So you can make your own pack for tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. It's not bad. Well, I mean, yeah, there's I a was... lot of electronics in it. I was way off. We were all a little off on this. Okay. So 25 bucks, what, per? Yeah, well, that's 25 bucks each. All right. Brand new. 
cool. I mean, look at the amp hours. It's huge. It's a very energy dense battery. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is four times the size of a normal battery. Yeah. But this is wild. So, um, how many? How many can we order? We can order more than twelve at once. More than we need more than twelve. So we did the math, and uh, there are fifty-six batteries per pack, and then we have six packs. Six. 336 total. Yeah, times, times $25 per. 8,400 bucks. Okay. McLaren is making a killing of profit on that one. Yeah. A killing. So. Well, there's like more to it than that. There's like that's a. That's about it. That's it. That's, that's it. That's where most of the expense lies in the batteries. Really? That's the most expensive part, yeah. I okay. mean, granted, yes, there's R&D and engineering, and you gotta pay people, because they only made like 375 cars. But um, yeah, that's a. These technically are off-the-shelf batteries, but, you know. Technically, if we get a BMS, if you buy those batteries on your dime, not mine, and we get a good BMS system, we have a lot of the battery pack, uh -huh. right? Uh, we'd, have to, we'd have to find a friend with a P1, and you'd have to do some CAN bus sniffing to yeah. figure out what the car's looking for. Yeah. And then get a decent DC to DC converter, there's not really much to that pack, module-wise. I mean, the DC to DC converter seems like it works. Seems right. Like I mean, you, you get a different one, probably a better one. But, okay. but are there any any upgrades that we can do instead yeah. of instead of doing that pack? Yeah. Can we make our own pack? Because if we're doing everything custom anyway. Yeah, we can do that. I just think these are comically large batteries, and it'd be funny to see them again. But, I mean, you probably want to get ones that are less expensive. Uh, this is still 10, 12 year old technology. Yeah. You know, the price of batteries have plummeted since then. So yeah. we could probably build a pack. You could build a pack for a lot less. I'm not building anything. Oh. I don't know anything about this. Yeah, neither do I. If, if you notice, yeah. I wasn't doing any of the disassembly. I did notice because, that. Yeah, yeah, I was behind the camera. Yeah. So I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm in the electrified garage where I assume <laughs> you electrify things in this garage. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, we got. I guess, what's your, uh, what do you want to do now? Take more of the cells out? Maybe uh, one lucky person should get this. One what lucky person. One lucky person, you could have this comically large battery. We're going to test it first and make sure it's safe. And then uh, Freddie's going to ship it out for you. One of the things that people are going to ask about is why can't I use Tesla batteries? Or can I use Tesla batteries? I don't know the answer to that. What's neither, the answer to that? Neither do I. So for these two batteries, uh, unfortunately, they only make up about uh, 24 volts a piece you need somewhere in the 500 so this wouldn't be enough unless you would actually uh, desolder all of these cells rip the cells out and configure your new battery pack so tesla cells aren't really feasible for a custom application like that okay usually what you would do if you want to get a custom battery pack in a car is you'd either take the entire pack and build the car around the pack or you take out individual cells and reconfigure them as you see fit for example this one right here this is a two pack uh, in a third party casing and those are the two coolant ports right there. Right. And then you have your communications right here, I'm guessing? Correct. Communications, yeah. and then you have the, your positive and negative, mm -hmm. and you have your BMS right here. Which and your is battery a, management system. Battery management system. So this is, this is a series of two, and you can kind of customize these and put them in a, you know, whatever configuration you want. These cells are live. The only thing that you have on top of this is a thin plastic sheet that's mm -hmm. protecting you and these batteries from getting shocked. If you want different and various other configurations, we have a, what's that, a six pack? One, two, three. There's a six pack right over here. I'll use my pointer stick. Hey, put that back. Yeah, this is very expensive. There's, um, there's a package of these here, but these are pretty much how you were to put Tesla cells in an aftermarket configuration. Mm -hmm. It's a four pack here, six there, and three over there. And this way they're pretty modular. You could mm -hmm. have you know, one in the middle and two at the sides, or you could have all stacked on top of each other, whatever you see fit. So those, wouldn't be great for your application. Mm -hmm. Put this down here. Sure. Um, but they wouldn't be great. Um, so Tesla cells aren't really convenient in every application. You have a really, really, really small area to put these in. Mm -hmm. These aren't really the best ones for it. Um, there's a lot of different other ones you could use. Um, A123 systems, uh, they sell the pouch cells yeah. that work in the, uh, in the front of the 12 volt battery, yeah. you know, like we talked about before. But they also have different various sizes for these. Um, you could use these, you could use uh, 18650s, you could use Tesla cells. Or what 18650s are, are, are these, these guys? Yeah. Yes, they're, these. they're like laptop batteries. But they come loose. Okay. So these are all glued together. You can get the loose ones and build your own pack that way. 
there's a lot of different variations to this. What uh, would you, if this was your car, what would you do? Mm -hmm. This was my car, you know what I would do already. What would you do? I would um, remove the hybrid system. No, you wouldn't. I would remove the hybrid system. No, you wouldn't because you are building a hybrid car right now. I would. You're installing a hybrid system in a car that didn't have it before. Again, I would remove the hybrid system <laughs> and I would build the motor mm -hmm. and uh, I would just run it and save uh, hundreds of pounds of weight and I have the fastest P1 ever. Is this car stock? It's all stock, officer. Yeah. All stock. Came like this from the factory. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So now I have some really big decisions to make, but one decision I don't have to make is taking this car apart, and namely this door. Now, this door is kind of important because I have to take apart the door panel, and then uh, the door panel will get shipped off to uh, E3 Customs where they can do an interior. But I wanna find out if this window motor works because I have a little theory that says that the motors, like all the motors, all the you know 12 volt on and off motors in this car, I think most of them are probably still good, and we're gonna find that out right now. And I have to take this apart, and there's probably a lot of bolts that are rusted, so wish me luck. I'm gonna need it. That actually was a lot easier than I thought, but this is gonna be the moment of truth because we have the window regulator here, we have the window, and we have the window motor. Uh, these window motors are, uh, I, I think they're sealed uh, from the elements, but there were a lot of elements, so it'd have to be sealed really well. I just took off this uh, connector, and the way you can tell which wires are the power wires is usually you see which two wires are the fat ones. Those are the power wires. They didn't just apply power on ground because these are DC motors. And I'm using a thing called a power probe. It takes 12 volts from a battery. I have a battery hooked up uh, right here, kind of between my legs. And I just take the ground, put it on one pin, and here goes nothing. Whoa, look at that. Everybody calm down. <laughs> Look at that! So, I have not done anything to this. I haven't cleaned it. This has literally just been in a flood and sat, and now it works perfectly. It actually sounds really, really nice. Ah, that bodes well for the rest of the car. And now is a part of the video where I go off camera and get a lot of work done because I need this car finished. And it is several weeks later and the P1 is done. I love that we went with an OEM paintwork. It looks great in the yellow and the carbon and the... Freddie, what are you doing? Who left the gate open? I am. Um, what are you this, doing? This is embarrassing. Hi, how are you? Good, good. How, how's your P1 coming? It's all right. It's, it's okay. Well, I, oh, oh, were you trying to... Yeah, I was doing a thing for... Uh, okay, so... Yeah. Um, I am in the place where dreams come true, Mr. Jay Leno's garage. And this is his P1 that he bought brand new. And uh, his has a lot less salt on it than mine does. And I think we're gonna take a little bit of a look around. I know I'm really excited. So uh, what do you love about this car? I know you're- Well, I love I got the salt-free one. I okay. think you made a big mistake. Yeah. I think the salt-free is better. Yeah, also though, it doesn't have water in it, right? Or gluten, no. You know, at the time, there were three supercars out, the LaFerrari, mm -hmm. this, and the 918. And this was the unknown one. People yeah. know Ferrari, obviously, and, and Porsche. And they thought, I, I remember McLaren was right, can we sell 375 of them, you know? Yeah. Little bit work. 
I mean, I, I had faith in it because it's what I liked. It, it's rear wheel drive. Yeah. You can hang the tail out a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's lighter than the other two. Although it's complex, it's not as complex as the other two. No, it's, it's really not. And I, I've been happiest with this. I have friends that have 918s and they like them, but a couple of them had the batteries go dead twice. Yeah. You know? I mean, I use mine regularly. I keep it on the charger. This battery is now going on eight, almost nine years old. Yeah. And it's fine. I, yeah. I don't find I've lost anything. So I think when you get your side together, I, I think you'll be, be happy with it. And Hopefully. I must say, I enjoy watching your channel, watching you do it because you're doing something nobody else has even dared to try. And I, I think it's fantastic. It's, it's surreal to hear you say that because, uh, you know, I've been watching you for, you know, more than a decade. And I remember when you first got this car, right. you went to England and, you know, went on the test track and everything. And this cemented for me, you know, why I love McLarens. Like, I'm a big McLaren fan right. as well. And uh, this was, to me, like a Frank Stephenson design. It's, it's timeless. Like, you can make this car today and it still looks like it's from the future. Um, and this is, I think, I mean, it... Value-wise, I, I think it's it's a really it's a lot of car for the money. It's expensive, but it's a lot of car. For it the is. Money. It's a lot of car for the money, and it does every. There's so much science in it, you know. Yeah. I, I've been in a lot of supercars. People just take another version of a Corvette engine and put bigger turbo or something on, and it's louder and it feels fat. Whereas this is just like a scalpel. I mean, it shifts. Yeah. Bam, 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 and every, mm -hmm. everything. You know, every time I take it out, I run through the cycle. I, I drive it fast. And then I drive it on um, like quote the economy mode. I go into the yeah. let the electrics take over for six miles, engine shuts off. Six miles, that's that's always good. Yeah. Well, you can double your mileage if you're going somewhere. Oh, okay. I mean, if, wait, from wait, here wait. to the end of the block. Okay. No, no, but you, you you drive six miles, mm -hmm. and then the gas engine comes on, mm -hmm. and after about eight nine minutes, you got six miles again. So the engine shuts that's off. That's that's actually not too bad. Yeah. So you actually double. Yeah. yeah. Like if you got a low tank, you switch mm -hmm. into that and you go twice as far. But yeah. no, it's been bulletproof. All I've done is replace, uh, I've replaced tires. Mm -hmm. I dented a wheel once, I chipped it, so I bought a new wheel. Yeah, they're easy. They're so light too. They're, they're so light. light. And yeah. I mean, it was $7,000, a lot of money, but. Yeah, for a million complete, dollar car. Right? Yeah, comparing everything else to the car, it's the cheapest thing on the car. Yeah, exactly. You know, so no, it's been good. I think you'll be very happy when you, when you get yours together. So one thing I wanted your uh, your opinion on is yeah. I, you know, when I buy cars and, and modify them, um, I want to make them kind of more than what they were originally out, set out to do. So my car, I'm calling it the P1 Evo, right. and we're doing a bespoke body, but I always thought that this car was the spiritual successor to that car, the F1. And one of the components of that is uh, to have a really high top speed. Now I know top speed is not like, usable, you can't do right. 280 you know, miles an hour uh, anywhere, but I thought that like it has to be something that's special. It has to have that one right, metric. Right. So we're gonna try to, uh, we're gonna unlock the speed limiter of this car, which is at 217 miles an hour because of tires. And then uh, we're gonna try to beat the speed tail, the McLaren speed tail, which is at 250 miles an hour. Yeah, I, I guess I'm not much of a high speed guy. I don't, because of the tire, the tire issue. I always remember there's a thing called the Silver State Classic, you know that race? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a number of years ago, and a guy shows up on a Ferrari and he has the second level tires that are good, you know, I, I get what the rating is. One goes to 100, one goes to 120. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's 150 and then there's the unlimited. I'm just yeah. do that. And this guy had tires good for 120. Uh -huh. Okay. And he was going 135 or something. Tire blew out, killed his wife. Oh, car that's crazy. Uh, and when they say the tires won't do it, of course. they really won't do yeah, it. Yeah, but that's why yeah. we have. So the thing is, yeah. we have tire technology that will do it. So right. the tires that go on like a Koenig's Edge, which are Cup 2s or special, especially made yeah. something for. But like to me, all the fun is between 40 and 120. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where you really have a great time yeah. with these cars. To, you know, I, I, I drove the Speedtail. Mm -hmm. I was not as impressed with it as I was with this. Of course. And that's because the, I yeah. realized. Well, they put it all on the top end where nobody really cares mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. I mean, you get caught doing 250 on a public road. So you're no. going to prison. Yeah, 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 for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what um, what I'm trying to do is not only to, to have that top end, but also make a very usable car. So yeah. And the, the other side, thing yeah. is scary is the things you don't replace mm -hmm. below 200 oh. are wheel bearings. And you just oh, the usual, yeah. suddenly you're running 250, 260. 
you are generating so much heat. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, a wheel lock. I mean, you know, you've got all these things. So be careful, my friend. Well, look, yeah. look, listen, it's uh, it's all content for YouTube. So yeah. that's, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Now we, uh, we're gonna go through absolutely everything. Uh, we're gonna put the car in a wind tunnel. We're gonna make sure that uh, the suspension is doing what it's doing at certain speeds. Um, but uh, we're, we're literally like re-engineering a lot of the car. No, I think that's exciting. And it's fun to see, quote, the layman do yeah. that. I, I mean, yeah. you're a hero to a lot of people because you go, oh, I could never do that. Well, he's doing it. So yeah. why couldn't I try, you know? Yeah. So I, I think it's good. I mean, you, you help people's dreams come true. You know, people can't afford one of these cars, but they can afford a wrecked one yeah. and spend the rest of their life putting it together. Yeah. But that's the fun part for a lot several of people. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. say that for sarcastic, but, it, but it's true. So, but at least you possess it, even though you're not driving it. I mean, I know, I know a lot of guys like that. Well, thank you so much. I, I appreciate you, uh, you know, us looking at your wonderful car and uh, I wish you many more miles with this. But uh, question, when I get my P1 done, I would love to bring it here. Yeah, that'd be fun. Have you, uh, have you drive it. Yeah, I'd love to drive it. I'd, I'd like to see what the difference is. Because awesome. this, this has been a great car. I just pretty much do oil changes and that's about mm -hmm. all you know that's, that's all it needs really that's it's, all you have to do simple. and you just do the regular preventative maintenance on it and it's fine it's fine they haven't had any electrical problems or anything else so. well if uh, if you run into any issues i may know a guy that has worked on this oh, and really? yeah <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah I, can, I can get you some answers if we'll you're give uh, a shot right, right, hey where does this bolt go thank you so much man ah awesome Yeah, this looks like just regular fiberglass insulation. And it did its job because the battery did have quite a bit of a fire. <laughs> Ugh. That's uh that's probably probably toxic.